Roadblock in your way. The Pygmies Retail Sloth is scientific name is Bradipus pygmaeus. Pygmy three-toed sloths have a tan face with a dark brown band across the brow and orange eye patches. The back is usually dark brown with an obvious dorsal stripe. Pygmy sloths are unique because they have long hairs on the top and sides of its head, giving the impression of a hood. Compared to the brown-throated three-toed sloth, Pygmy sloth is on average 40% smaller in body mass, weighing 5 to 7 pounds, and 15% smaller in length. They are on average 19 to 21 inches with a 1.8 to 2.4 inch tail, about as long as your desk. They have 18 teeth, 10 on top, and 8 on bottom. Pygmy sloths live in Isla Escuado de Veraguas, a small island off the coast of Panama. They are thought to have originated from isolation of individuals off of the mainland population of brown three-toed sloths. A 2011 study found only 79 pygmy three-toed sloths on Estudo de Vargas. Although the island has no human population, visiting fishermen poach the sloth, which is an easy target because it only lives in the mangrove forest by the sea. Although protected as a wildlife refuge, the enforcement is lax. The pygmy three-toed sloth was only recognized as a distinct species in 2001. Right. There you are. Pygmy sloth. Hard-earned pygmy sloth. But look at this guy. Look at the green in his fur. This is the uh, kind of textbook thing about sloths that you'll always read about, which is this algae in their fur. So, what were Buffon's first impressions of a sloth? We should speak more of wretchedness. I'm presuming he must be referring to the algae. Is it in every sloth, this stuff? Not every sloth has sloth algae, but they all have specially developed hair that allows algae to live in the hair. So they actually have roofs or fissures in the hair, and the algae live in those fissures. So is this algae only found on sloths? Because that's the big, I guess that's the big question. Is it not just a slightly mouldy animal that spends all its time in the trees? As far as we know, we've never been able to find this algae anywhere but on the back of a sloth. And what's really cool is the two-toed and three-toed sloths both have algae, but they have different species of algae only found on their fur. We've never found it in a plant or in a tree or anywhere else in the wild. Wow, look at you. I can't believe I'm holding possibly the rarest animal on Earth. Look at that. You kind of feel sorry for it, don't you? Just, just for being a sloth, if nothing else. This, this whole way of being is what is makes them particularly peculiar to me. So we've got a belly, which is a quarter to a third of its body weight. The portly Comte de Buffon claimed the sloth had a defect in its constitution. Seems he was wrong again. So a lot of its body mass is put aside for digesting. The trees in the forest, the leaves, they're everywhere. Most of them are nasty, most of them are fairly leathery, most of them are full of toxins. Our sloth, by being a, a walking fermentation tank, has specialised itself to such an extent, it's had to compromise all the other things. It's not a solid, feisty animal. It feels kind of flimsy. And that's possibly because only a quarter of its body weight is muscle. Now, muscle is very expensive. If you've got a lot of muscle, you use up a lot of energy. And also, it's incredibly heavy. So if you're in a boreal animal like a sloth, it means that uh, you're not going to get to the thin twigs at the ends of the branches very easily if you're heavy. So that's why it is so slow and steady and deliberate and seemingly indolent with its, uh, its movements. It's because it simply can't go fast. It doesn't have the muscles to power it. So for lots of reasons, this animal has pretty much given up muscle in order to be able to eat otherwise nutritionally poor food. But that's what it's doing. It's exploiting a resource. It's what it's so good at. Buffon, you haven't got a badly turned leg to stand on. There's so much to say about this creature. I can't believe Buffon ever even handled one. Let's, um, how do you turn a sloth around when they're getting attached to your head? Oh, it's real short hair. Yeah. And it's orangey. And then the orange will change in variation between sloths. But that's the actual oil. And you can actually smell it a little bit. It's almost like a I can't believe cologne. I'm sniffing the rarest mammal on Earth. I don't know what cologne you wear, but that... Oh, blimey. Yeah, it's musty, but I've never sniffed the rest of a sloth, so I can only take your word for it. <laughs>
the most bizarre animal. We've seen our three toed sloth on the mainland. How does this differ, really? First off, they're about 40% the size of a normal three toed sloth on the mainland. But if you look at its face, the markings are a lot brighter. Its eye markings, it's almost like it's wearing a mask. And it has this sort of cap look right behind its ears, yeah. where it looks like it's wearing somewhat of a, like a hat. And when they first found the sloth, they called it the monk sloth because it looks like a monk. It looks like it's wearing the typical monk headwear. They have the most variable and the lowest body temperature of any mammal on Earth. And some think because they're so dependent on the ambient temperature, if the temperature drops enough, they simply stop working. So they don't digest. So they go dormant effectively and can't start digesting until they warm up, which also explains why they are so sluggish. All these things all played together mean that that sloth, that animal that we all kind of love to laugh at, is actually a serious bit of survival kit. By being as slow as possible, by reducing your muscle mass, by increasing your digestive system, you have pretty much got a creature perfect for making the most of probably the most plentiful resource in the forest, or in this case, the mangrove, and that's leaves. We've only got to know these relatively recently. 2001, this animal was, was described to science. And in the meantime, very few people, well, other than Bryson, has really been here. So it's, a, it's really a whole story that needs to be unraveled. I love them. Seriously love them. Probably fair, fair enough to put you back, isn't it? And now the time has come to say goodbye to this rare and incredibly weird creature as it disappears into... That's the slowest animal release I've ever done. <laughs> one of maybe a hundred of its kind. That's one percent of the population of this species. Many others similar to clear trimer are joining the fight to save the pygmy sloths. They have even managed to get the other three species of the three-toed sloths off the endangered species list. <laughs> They can actually swim very well. They actually float and they just do the doggy paddle and they can swim better than they can walk on the ground. It's really weird. It's very strange to see the world's slowest mammal swimming better than it can crawl. So these sloths are perfectly happy swimming in the salt water between mangrove patches. Maybe he's looking for a new mate for some new habitat, new mangroves, but they can't swim to the mainland, it's too far, so they're isolated out here. So the pygmy sloths have no way of leaving the island, and this means it's the only home for these gentle and defenceless little creatures. That makes them extremely vulnerable. So because there's only 200 of these animals uh, on this one island, everyone counts, and so even just one mangrove tree being cut down really threatens the entire population. The island of Escudo is a marine nature reserve. No one is allowed to live there or interfere with the wildlife or habitat. But unfortunately, the rules are not strictly enforced. Every time I come out here, there's fewer and fewer sloths and more and more people. I honestly think that the future for the pygmy sloth is uh, not going to be that bright. Uh, there's still illegal logging going on the mangroves, so people are poaching them. And their numbers are just so small that any small thing could wipe out the whole species. So if I had to guess, I would say that I would bet in 10 years they will not be a species anymore. Like so many of the new species in our decade of discovery, the pygmy three-toed sloth is at a crossroads. Unless conscious efforts are made to protect them and their fragile habitats, they'll be lost to science when they still have so much to teach us. Well, I think the importance of the pygmy sloth is that it just shows how fast evolution can happen. I mean, this species is only cut off for about 9,000 years. So it just shows how fast evolution and, and adaptation can occur. And so it's a really, you know, amazing discovery.